name is Armin Kretzinger and welcome back to our course on the fundamental teachings of Christianity. We want to know what is true. We don't want to live our life based on a lie. We have seen that trusting culture, popular opinion or other people to learn truth is not a good idea at all. And even though reason, common sense, experience and experiment are very useful in teaching us some true things. There are some true things that are perhaps more difficult to find, or we need another way to find it. Christians believe that divine revelation from God is a way to find truth about important things. But in order for divine revelation to be trustworthy, we need to know whether God actually exists and whether everything he says is actually true. And we even need to understand how to receive what he says and how to understand it. These are questions that we want to answer in this course. The Bible says that fulfilled, predictive, detailed prophecies are a way to establish that the Bible is trustworthy, a divinely inspired book, and that God exists. There are at least five points to keep in mind when investigating prophecies in the Bible. There must be multiple prophecies that predict events. These prophecies must not be vague, but specific. We need evidence that these prophecies were in fact given before they were fulfilled. We need evidence that the prophecies were actually fulfilled. And those who gave the prophecies must claim to have received it from God. So let's jump right into it and investigate some prophecies that we find in the Bible. The first prophecy that we will look at is found in the book of Daniel chapter 2. We are going to travel back about 2,500 years to ancient Babylon, which is today known as Iraq. And the ruins of Babylon are still there today. Babylon was a powerful kingdom during that time under the rule of King Nebuchadnezzar. One night, the king was sleeping, like most people try to do at night. And he had a very strange dream. When he woke up in the morning, he couldn't remember all of the details of his dream. Has this ever happened to you? You wake up in the morning and you know that you had a dream, but you can't remember the exact specifics, details about this dream. People have interesting dreams. Some people dream that they fall and then when they hit the ground, they shake and they wake up. Some people believe they can flap their arms and fly. Others believe that something is chasing them or they want to run, but they can't seem to run. Or they want to talk or scream, but no sound is coming out. So King Nebuchadnezzar wanted to know the details of his dream. So he called in all his wise men, who were mostly magicians, astrologers, and fortune tellers. This king wasn't a Christian or anything like that. It seems like the culture and religion of Babylon during that time was more into worshipping idols and other gods. In Daniel chapter 2, verse 2 to 3, the Bible says, then the king commanded to call the magicians and astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dream. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. And then they probably did all their rituals and things, but they didn't know the king's dream. Knowing another person's dream without them telling you is not easy. So they asked the king to tell them his dream and then they will tell him the meaning. So whatever he says about the dream, they can just make up any interpretation. But the king said if they can't tell him the dream and its meaning, he will execute them. And because they couldn't tell him, he really commanded them to be executed. In this course, if I ask you something and you can't answer, don't worry, you will not be executed. Amongst those wise men of the king, was commanded for to be executed was Daniel. Daniel was a captive from Jerusalem and unlike most of the other wise men in the palace, he was a Christian. He believed in the God of the Bible. And now Daniel also faced the death penalty. So when he heard about the command, he prayed to God. And the Bible tells us what Daniel told the king when he came before him. In Daniel chapter 2 verse 28, Daniel told the king, but there is a God in heaven that reveals secrets and makes known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Obviously, it's very clear that Daniel said that it was God who gave him this special revelation. He does not give any glory to man and doesn't take any credit for himself. This is one of our five points, one of the criteria that we were looking for. 
And then Daniel first tells the king what he saw in his dream. And you can read this description in Daniel chapter 2. Basically, this king saw a great image. The head was of gold, the arms and chest of silver, the thighs of brass, legs of iron, and feet that were both iron and clay. So this was quite a colorful man. And then there was a rock that came flying through the air, completely smashed the image on the feet, and this rock became a big mountain that filled the whole earth. Obviously, King Nebuchadnezzar also wanted to know the meaning of his dream. And since it was God who gave the dream to Nebuchadnezzar, it was also God who gave the meaning of this dream to Daniel to give to King Nebuchadnezzar. This dream of the image was a prophecy about the major kingdoms that would dominate the world and also persecutes God's people. From Daniel's time, about 2,500 years ago, to even beyond our time today, there would be four major kingdoms that would rule. And then the prophecy explains what happens after the fourth kingdom. This prophecy started with the kingdom of Babylon, who ruled the known world at that time. Daniel chapter 2 verse 38 says, You are that head of gold. Archaeologists have discovered amazing things from ancient Babylon that reveal the wealth and the splendor of Babylon, and many of those things are on display today. But it was only the head of the image that was made of gold. Babylon would not rule forever. They ruled from about 605 to 539 BC. Daniel chapter 2 verse 39 says, But after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to yours. History tells us that this next world empire was the Medo-Persian empire under the leadership of people like Cyrus and Xerxes. This kingdom is also mentioned in the book of Daniel itself. In fact, in the book of Isaiah, Cyrus was named by God about 150 years before he was even born. The kingdom of Medo-Persia is represented by the arms and the chest of silver. And history confirms that they ruled from about 539 to 331 BC. The Cyrus Cylinder, which I believe is on display in the British Museum in London, even describes how Cyrus overthrew Babylon. But after the arms and chest of silver were the thighs of brass, the next empire under the leadership of Alexander the Great is also mentioned in the book of Daniel by name. In history and even in modern films, the battles between Persia and Greece is often described and even depicted. History confirms that Greece ruled from about 331 to 168 BC. But even though Alexander was such a military genius and Greece took over from Persia, the prophecy in Daniel chapter 2 said, that after the thighs of brass, there would be legs of iron. It was the iron monarchy of the Roman Empire that took over from Greece. History confirms that the Roman Empire ruled from about 168 BC to the mid-4th century AD. They were the kingdom that ruled during the time when Jesus was alive and during the whole of the New Testament period. So we have seen how the head of gold, the arms and chest of silver, the thighs of brass, and the legs of iron correctly represent Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. History confirms this. But after the legs of iron, we had the feet that were part of iron and part of clay. It was different from the other parts of the statue. Daniel chapter 2 verse 41 says, And as to that which you saw, the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. The Bible prophecy said that the Roman Empire was not going to be destroyed or overtaken by another empire, but instead it was going to be divided. And this is exactly what happened. It was the ten barbarian tribes in Europe that divided Rome and took over their territory. And since that time, from the mid-4th century AD until this very time, these tribes are still there in Europe and they are still divided. They might work together and do some things together, but they are still independent groups. They might work together and do some things together, but they are still independent groups. That's why the prophecy in Daniel chapter 2 describes the feet as part of iron and part of clay, because iron and clay cannot mix. Daniel chapter 2 verse 43 says, And as you saw iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mix themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cling to one another even as iron is not mixed with clay. The Bible predicted an attempt to unite through intermarriage, through war, 
But iron and clay cannot mix. Louis XIV, Charles V, Napoleon, Hitler, and so many others hoped to shape the destiny of our world and unite Europe. But they all failed. The prophecy said that they will not mix. Babylon, the head of gold, rose and fell. Medo-Persia, the arms and chest of silver, rose and fell. Greece, the thighs of brass, rose and fell. The legs of iron, Rome, rose and fell. And now we are living in the feet of iron and clay. What happens next? Daniel explains that the rock that smashed the image on its feet represents God's kingdom that will be established that will never come to an end. When I first heard this prophecy in Daniel chapter 2, I was amazed at how God not just only showed which kingdoms will rule, but he even went into more detail explaining how Rome will not be conquered by another kingdom, but instead divided, and how those divisions will try to unite but fail. At first I thought, maybe all of these things first happened, and then someone wrote it down afterwards. So about the details regarding the dividing of the fourth kingdom, and how it will try to unite and fail, and how there will not be a human fifth empire, is there evidence that this prophecy existed that it was written down before it was fulfilled? From 1946 to 1957, a very famous discovery came to light. It was the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls were found in 11 caves in Qumran in the West Bank, and they are kept in Israel Museum today. But they are also available online at www.deadseascrolls.org.il where literally hundreds of fragments of the Bible is found and available to anyone who has access to the internet. Another discovery was also made in March 2021. During the first discovery in the 1940s and 1950s, parts of the book of Daniel, including chapter 2, were found in cave 4 at Qumran. These date well before the birth of Jesus, more than 2,000 years ago. And we know that during the time of Jesus, the book of Daniel was studied and even mentioned by Jesus. Looking at the evidence that is available to us, it is very reasonable to conclude that the last detailed part of the prophecy in Daniel chapter 2 about Rome being divided and the attempt to unite Europe and that no fifth human empire would rule the world were all given before it was fulfilled. And it is still true to this day. The prophecy of Daniel chapter 2 fulfills our criteria for supernatural prophecy. It predicted a future event. It is not vague, with the last part being very specific. From historical and archaeological data, for example the Dead Sea Scrolls, it is reasonable to conclude that the detailed part of the prophecy existed before it was fulfilled. From history, we can also see that the facts line up exactly with what the prophecy said. The prophecy is fulfilled and still true to this day. There's no world empire ruling the world and there's division in Europe where Rome was before. And lastly, Daniel made it clear that it was God who gave him the interpretation. So if I want to say that God doesn't exist and that the Bible isn't divine, then I need to be able to provide another explanation for this prophecy in Daniel chapter 2. But not only for Daniel chapter 2. There are many more prophecies that we're going to look at in the future that are even more detailed and more amazing than the prophecy of Daniel chapter 2. And this is something you don't want to miss. A great documentary that was shown on History Channel and that won an award is called Kingdoms in Time by Amazing Facts. And I really recommend this to anyone who wants to learn more about Bible prophecies, why we can trust the Bible and believe in the existence of God. Join us again as we continue to dig into the Bible, into history, into fact, and discover some of the most amazing Bible prophecies.